it's Glen Karens, rocks glasses, shot glasses. There are a ton of different options when it comes to the best way to enjoy that sweet nectar of the gods we call whiskey. Does it even matter? Hell, maybe you should just take a pull straight out of the bottle. Well, that's what we're looking at today. So let's talk about some man shit. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Man Shit. Like I said, today we are taking a look at whiskey glasses. Which is the best one? There is nothing scientific about what we're doing today. There is so much personal preference and these are just my opinions. Your mileage may vary, but this is my take. I'm gonna give you my opinion on what the best whiskey glass is and why I think so. There are so many different kinds of whiskey glasses out there, it'd be impossible for me to cover them all. What I tried to do is select a pretty good cross section of what I thought was a good representation of the different types of glasses out there. So hopefully we covered generally most of our bases. So the contenders for the best whiskey glass today are gonna be Gold Standard, the Glen Karen. Calling it the Gold Standard because this pretty much is the gold standard for like whiskey tasting. Guys at the Whiskey Vault, this is their go-to. Most of your whiskey channels where they're tasting whiskeys and doing different things, they're gonna use this type of glass. We're also gonna take a look at your basic rocks glass. There's a billion different kind of variations of this, but you know, just your basic rocks glass. We're also gonna take a look at the Dragon Glass. Uh, there's a few different kind of uh, versions of this. It's the kind of glass that they're kind of made to sit on a 45 degree. These are mostly just for looking cool uh, on Instagram shots and stuff. It's it's more a novelty kind of thing because of the angle. Nevertheless, kind of a cool glass. We're gonna take a look at it. Then we have the glass I call the Tesla of whiskey glasses, the Norlin whiskey glass. Uh, and we're taking a look at this because as far as all these glasses go, more research and thought went into the design of this glass than probably any other. If you watch the video on Norlin and kind of the background of how they came up with this, it is crazy the amount of thought that went into the design of this glass. So definitely had to include this one in our lineup. And we're also gonna take a look at shot glasses. I mean, eh, we'll get to that in a second. And hell, we'll even briefly discuss just taking a pull out of the bottle. Some people say, why even bother with a glass? It's already in a glass. There you go. Okay, so first and foremost, let's just knock a couple off the list to narrow the playing field a little bit. Drinking it out of the bottle. Now I know this is not technically a glass. This is actually the absence of a glass. And the only reason I mention this is because I know some of you contrarians out there, I know some of you guys in your comments are gonna say, I'm too hard to drink out of a glass. I just drink straight out of the bottle. Okay, well, I guess that's an option, but it's definitely not optimal. It's not very conducive to sharing with your friends. Nobody wants to take a swig of your backwash out of the bottle. That's just kind of nasty. So let's just agree, if you're not filming a Western or if you're not a pirate, drinking it straight out of the bottle is definitely not the best way to go. Just getting it out of the way, because I know you guys, there's gonna be some of those comments. The next one that we're gonna talk about briefly, and we're just gonna go ahead and eliminate the shot glass. This is an acceptable way to drink whiskey. I mean, you can go to any bar and order a shot of whiskey, but shot glasses are not designed for enjoying fine spirits. Shot glasses are designed to get alcohol into your system as quickly as possible. This is not something that if you have a nice 10, 12, 15 year whiskey or bourbon or scotch that you want to savor, you're gonna just shoot it back. I mean, it's kind of disgraceful actually to take a really nice scotch or whiskey and just slam it back real quick. I mean, you're defeating the whole purpose of enjoying it slowly and kind of savoring it. Shot glasses really only remind me of crappy liquor, regret, bad decisions, and worse hangovers. I mean, that's really all you're gonna get from this, let's be honest. This isn't even in the running. So, sorry not sorry, shot glasses, no go. Okay, so now that we've cut out all the bull crap, cut out the fat, and we're really down to the real contender. <clears throat> So, like I said, down to the four that are actual <laughs> You're killing me, Smalls. So for the four, for the love of God, man. You're not gonna stop until I let you. Nope, sure ain't. Okay, then just go ahead before I have to kill you. Please, just carry on. Thank you. <laughs> it's about time. <laughs> We'd just like to take a quick second to thank the sponsor of today's video, Tiege Hanley. If you're not familiar with Tiege, Tiege Hanley is a monthly subscription men's skincare system for guys like you and me and Dumbledore over here. Whoa, 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 pump those brakes, baby gap. Let's not do that comparison. Me and you are nothing alike, cuz. Is that right? Well, do you like to take care of yourself and stay well-groomed? Well, yeah. 
I mean, everybody does. Well, do you like to keep things simple and use high quality products? All right, you got me there. Keep it simple, stupid, uncomplicated. That's my jam. How about the fact that Tiege Hanley sends you a 30 day supply of everything you need every single month so you don't have to stress out about it. All right, I'll give you that one. I'm beginning to see a pattern here. I see where you're going with this. All right, then shut up Gandalf and let me finish. Hey man, don't be knocking on Gandalf. That dude was a boss. So if this sounds like something you're interested in, click the link that Duck Dynasty here is gonna put down below this video so you can receive 10% off your first box of Tiege Hanley. All right, baby Gap, thank you very much. Can I go back to talking about whiskey now? That'd be great. By all means, please do. All right, so back to the four main whiskey. I forgot packs. some. Ooh, I forgot. You gotta be kidding. Don't forget to tell them that with membership, they get early access to new release items like the new chapstick. That's a good feature. That's the last time, mother... Oh, Jesus Christ. What? I thought chapstick was a good thing. It's winter. Jesus. Okay. So I think that's it. If he interrupts again, I'm cutting his damn tongue out. <laughs> so down to the four main glasses. We're gonna compare the Glen Karen, the Rocks glass, the Norlin, and the Dragon glass. Now, how I'm gonna do this is I've got Old Faithful, a bourbon that I am extremely familiar with. Some good old Woodford Reserve double oaked. This is great stuff if you haven't tried it. Really, really good. I'm gonna put a pour in each of these glasses and then we're gonna compare them on four categories, five categories, five categories. We're great. We got looks, ergonomics, how it feels in your hand. <laughs> how it feels in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, yeah. drinkability, you know, how, how well it drinks, what it does for the smell, if you get a good nose off of it. Heat exchange, because heat exchange in whiskey is bad. You don't want your heat of your hand getting to it. That makes the alcohol evaporate even faster, and that's no bueno. And finally, and I don't know if this category is gonna even have any differences, is I wanna see if there is any taste difference from glass to glass. I'm sure there are some guys out there with these really crazy palettes that can taste differences. I don't think I'll notice any flavor differences. They're probably all gonna score the same in that category, but nevertheless, I think it'd be interesting to see if I do taste any differences. So let's get a little whiskey poured here and we'll get cracking. All right, first looks. Now I know this is extremely subjective. You may totally disagree with me, but it's my video. If you disagree, make your own video. <laughs> this is gonna be kind of a tight one because all of them look good in my opinion. The rocks glass, it's kind of hard to judge because rocks glasses come in like a million different varieties. So, you know, this is just a Tommy Bahama kind of very plain thick bottom rocks glass, which I think looks pretty good. These really sweet New Orleans rocks glasses. This is called the rocks failed edition, I think, because they make them in all black, which is this cool kind of matte black kind of thing going on. Awesome glass. It thing is heavy too, man. This thing weighs like a pound. It's a serious glass. The Norlin, I think, is just an excellent looking glass. I like the way the whiskey kind of reflects off the rim of the glass. Um, I think they put looks pretty forward in the design of this thing. It's got the sides of the glass that are kind of angled in to let the light hit the whiskey in different ways. Really, really good looking glass. The Dragon Glass leans heavily on looks. I mean, that's really its kind of main thing is looks. It's got the different bevel and it sits at a 45 degrees. So if you want to get those Instagram bangers of your uh, nightly whiskey, it looks real good in photos. The Glen Karen, you know, it's nothing special, but it's a good classic kind of uh, standard looking glass. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the way it looks. Now this is all out of 10, by the way. The Norlin, I'm gonna give a 10 because I love the way that glass looks. I think it's awesome. The Glen Karen, I'm gonna give an eight. It looks good, but it's you know nothing to write home about. The Dragon Glass, I'm gonna give a nine. It does lean heavily, and I do think it looks really, really cool. And the Rocks Glass, I'm gonna give a nine just because, I mean, there's so many different options. There's some really, really sharp looking glasses uh, with Rocks Glasses, so. Moving on to ergonomics. The Norlin, first off, I love this glass. It's got a good, just, you can get a good man grip on it. I, I like being able to hold a glass. So I'm gonna give the Norland a nine out of 10. I don't really see much wrong. There's some little bevels on here that you know some may say is a little fiddly with you hold it. So we'll take a little bit off, but for the most part, I think this is an excellent glass. Feels good in the hand, good stuff. The Glen Karen, I'm gonna say the Ergos are probably one of my least favorite parts about a Glen Karen. Now I know some people are going to freak out and say, what the hell are you talking about? Uh, Rex and Daniel from Whiskey Vault did a similar video where they compared whiskey glasses and Daniel was actually saying that he really prefers the Ergos. He really likes the way a Glen Karen feels in his hand. To each his own. I completely respect that. I just, I feel a little dainty when I hold it because you kind of hold it with like these couple fingers and it just feels a little like 
pinkies out, bitches. Like, it's just a little, it's just not my thing. It's a personal preference thing. I prefer to kind of hold a glass. I don't love the Ergo, so I'm gonna give the Glencairn a seven out of 10. The Dragon Glass, this is another one I'm not a big fan. It's actually kind of weird to hold because it's kind of bulbous and fat and all the flat sides, and then there's no flat bottom, so you kind of don't know where to, it's kind of fiddly and I don't, I mean, you can kind of grip it, but it, I'm just not a fan. Probably my least favorite Ergos of the selection. I'm giving this a six out of 10. And good old rocks glass. I mean, you got to give that like a nine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a rocks glass. It's just a good old standard man hold, go to town, get her done. So nothing wrong with that. Nine out of 10 on the rocks glass. Drink ability. Now this is where some things come into play here. My second least favorite about the Glen Karen is the drink ability. You really have to tilt this glass way, way up before you get anything out of it. So when you're drinking out of a Glen Karen, mm. man, that double looks good. That's good stuff. But do you see how far up I was before I got any liquid? You really, I mean, you're looking at the freaking ceiling before you get anything. So I'm not a huge, huge fan of that. It is kind of nice because it does slow so you don't get a big mouthful. Cause normally when I'm drinking whiskey neat, I just want little sips just to kind of really enjoy the flavor. I'm not trying to guzzle it down. So it does meter the amount of liquid, but you really got to tilt it up, which I don't care for. The Norland glass, however, mm. you see the difference when it hit my lips? And I think that was one of the key points when they were talking about the Norland glass when they were designing it is they wanted you to be able to have a conversation and be able to like maintain eye contact with somebody while drinking your liquor. Some people say they don't like because the lip is a little fat because it's a double walled kind of design. This is a little uh, fatter. I think Daniel and Whiskey Vault called it a sippy cup lip, <laughs> which I thought was pretty awesome. I don't mind the thickness of the lip. It, do it doesn't feel that thick in my mouth. We're going to leave that one alone. And I do really like the fact that I don't have to, I don't have to really work very hard or tilt my head to the ceiling to get something out of it. Where with this, I mean, you're really up there. I'm giving the Norland a nine. I'll take a little bit off for the thicker lip, but in general, I really like the way that drinks. I'm gonna give the Glencairn a seven because the ergos and the drink drinking of the Glencairn are probably my least favorite parts of it. So the Dragon Glass, I'm also gonna give a seven. It's kind of, it's it's flat on the, so it's kind of weird in your mouth. It's another one of these ones where you're really way back before you get anything out of it. And I, I don't like that. I don't really like the way that feels. And because it's such a steep angle that you that's right up there with the Glen Karen as far as how far up you're going before you get anything out of it. I, I don't care for the drinkability. I'm going to give that a seven also. And the rocks glass, I'm going to give like an eight. Um, I've drank out of rocks glass for years. Um, it's fine. You don't have to tilt your head very far up. Uh, you do have to be careful not to take too big of a swig. It's perfectly drinkable. This is what we drink 95% of liquids out of is a standard glass, so you can't knock it too bad. So I'm gonna give this a solid eight. Now this is where things get super interesting. The smell or the nose of the whiskey. Is there a difference? Because people say that that's the big thing about the Glen Cairns. The kind of bulb shape and the smaller mouth design funnels the smell of the whiskey up and the bulb allows the alcohol vapors to kind of sit down in there and allows you to get a better nose of the whiskey. I actually have never done this and I'm curious to smell all these. All have the same whiskey in them and see if I see a difference. So the Glen Karen, you definitely get a strong, strong scent. I get some alcohol burn though. Yeah, I mean, there is a dramatic difference between these two. This, you can really get in there and you can smell the brown sugars and the caramels and all the mapley sweet goodness of uh, double oak. This, I get a little bit of like sweet maple kind of but a lot of the flavor or a lot of the smell is very muted. Norlin. That's a tough one. You know, it's weird. The Norlin, I feel like the smell isn't quite as strong in the Norlin as it is in the Glen Karen, but I feel like I smell a little more alcohol in the Glen Karen. And I think the Norlin somehow, I mean, I get almost no alcohol like burn in my nose. I mean, I can get in there pretty deep and I get no alcohol, but I do get a good kind of nose of the smell of the whiskey, that very familiar smell of double oak. Yeah, see, definitely that, when I really get in there, it burns my nose more. The Dragon Glass, this should be pretty good. It's that tulip shape with the, to kind of keep the alcohol down in the bulb area and restrict it at the top. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's good. That actually does a pretty good job. Go back to the Glen Karen. Those three are really, really tough. 
I'm gonna say the Norlin and the Glencairn, I'm gonna give a tie at nine. Even though the, the Glencairn is a little bit stronger of a smell, you get a little more uh, intensity in it. I think the Norlin does a little bit better job at kind of removing that alcohol burn and alcohol kind of ethanol smell and kind of just giving you the, the notes you're trying to get out of whiskey. And the Dragonglass is right behind. I think it does a really excellent job. So I'm gonna give the Dragonglass an eight because it's pretty close. The Rocks Glass gets like a six. You, It's really, I mean, you, there's a very big difference when you get in there and smell out of something like a Gillen Karen compared to a rocks glass. Last heat transfer. Now we could probably get super technical about this and I could probe these things and put a thermometer in them and we could gauge the heat and over it. I'm just going with how much of your hand contacts the actual glass where the whiskey's at. Glen Karen does a pretty good job. You mostly hold it at the bottom here by this little nubbin. Only just a tiny, tiny bit of your fingers are attached there, which is probably transferring very little amount of heat. So we'll give that like a nine. The Norlin is by far the winner. Your hand, it's a double wall kind of situation. So this inner piece is completely suspended inside an outside shell. Your hand is not coming in contact with that whiskey at all. So this for sure, 10. No heat transfer whatsoever. And then both of these guys are full on hand to whiskey glass contact. So we're gonna give both of these a six because I mean, if you manhandle these, your body heat is gonna heat up the whiskey on both of these. So these both get a six. So now the next most interesting part of this is taste. This is the part where I might catch a buzz tasting all these whiskeys, but I'm gonna see if there's any flavor difference and I'll try to do some cuts here so it's not too boring you just sitting here watching me taste whiskey, but I wanna see if there is any difference in the way these glasses make the whiskey taste or if it's just even across the board. Start with the Norlin. Okay, good. Glen Karen. Now that I'm looking at the ceiling. <laughs> might be imagining things, but I felt a little more burn from the Glen Karen. That might just have been a weird thing because it's one after the other. So we'll go back. Dragon glass. Rocks glass. Back to the Norlin. If I can smack in your ear a little more. This is a no bullshit zone on my channel. I'm always pretty honest that uh, my palate is not as advanced. I don't taste a difference between the glasses. I thought maybe I did it first, but then I think it was just the compiling of me drinking a couple back to back as I went back and forth afterwards. I I can't tell a difference. That's not to say there isn't. I'm sure some people with more advanced palates than me can probably determine a little something, but I'm not tasting anything. And if it is anything, it's so minuscule, I don't think it matters. So I'm just gonna rate this an even five across the board out of 10. And that's not to say that the taste is bad, but that's just to kind of even the playing field and pretty much just eliminate that category because I am not seeing a difference there. Gotta keep it real with you folks. Let me tally up the scores here. If my calculations are correct, we've got 52 points for the Norlin. We've got 45 points for the Glen Karen. We've got 41 points for the Dragon Glass and 43 points for the Rocks Glass. So our winner is the Tesla of whiskey glasses, the Norlin Glass. Again, this is very subjective. The Norlin's Glass is a little kind of a little bit tiny bit thinner than some of the others. I think it's really cool the amount of design and kind of thought they put into this to make this a really good glass for drinking whiskey neat. And I think it comes through. For me, it comes through in the nose and in the looks, and I think it makes it a good glass. I'm not surprised that this one won. I really, really like the New Orleans glass. Number two, the gold standard. You can't fault the Glen Karen. It's got some drawbacks in my opinion with the little dinky pinky and the fact that you've got to look up at the ceiling before you get anything out of it. But I mean, there's a reason that this is the gold standard and pretty much everybody who does whiskey tastings uses glasses, uses the Glen Karen or glasses similar to these. It's just a great glass. So solid second place. Came in third, the rocks. I mean, it's kind of a classic standard glass. I mean, this is like I said, what we drink most of our fluids out of is just a standard glass. So I mean, how can you fault it too much? It's a glass. Plus, Rocks glasses have some really, really cool designs. Like I said, uh, these Norlin, these are called the Rock. You know, some of them have the really thick bottoms. You can get these in every shape, crystal, non-crystal colors. You can put big, huge ice cubes in them if you're into drinking it on ice. So, I mean, you know, it definitely has its pluses and minuses. You can't go wrong with just a standard Rocks glass. Sorry, Dragon Glass, you came in last place. Now, that's not to say that I do not like these whiskey glasses. Glasses. <laughs> 
<laughs> Couldn't make it through a video without mispronouncing something. They look cool. They're great conversation pieces. They're kind of a novelty thing just compared to the others. If you're really into drinking whiskey for enjoying the whiskey. Sorry guys from Dragon Glass. It's a cool looking glass, but uh, it gets outclassed by some of the others in this category. So that's it. That is my rundown of my favorite whiskey glasses. These are the whiskey glasses I own, and that is how they ended up ranking. Curious to see what you guys think. If you guys have any of these whiskey glasses, how would you rate these? Do you have different opinions? Do you think, uh, like Daniel does, that this is a sippy cup <laughs> lid and you hate the lip on this? Does it bug you to hold the Glen Cairn with your pinky out and look at the ceiling when you're trying to get a drink? I'll be curious to see what you guys have to say, but those are my opinions on what the best glass is for enjoying your sweet, sweet whiskey out of. As always, I will include links to all these glasses so if you're interested in any of them you know where to find them and that wraps up another episode of man shit i hope you guys enjoyed this got some good information out of it and enjoyed hanging out with me today and drinking a little bit of whiskey if you did feel free to smash that like button that always helps us out if you're not a subscriber please consider doing so we'd love to have you on board i hope everybody is having a fantastic week new year's is coming up so everybody stay safe out there have a great happy and safe new year's and we will see you in the next video